Hello class. Um, so this tutorial is going to be short. Let's add Swagger documentation to our API that we built in the last tutorial. Um, and add cost policy also. Uh, so if you have not seen the last tutorial, you should go here. This is it where we built a REST API using um, C Sharp and ASP.NET Core. So we are going to add um, um, Swag Buckles um, Swagger documentation to our API. So and also add cost policy to our API so that when you are trying to communicate with that um, API from outside or, or origins like from a front-end app, a React front-end app or, or any Angular, Angular front-end app so, so that you will not be having cost header issues. So let's go to our code. So these are code. Um, let's API YouTube. So the first thing we will add um, um, Swash Bokus Swagger documentation. So let's come to our project because we're going to add it in the in the middleware as a middleware in, in the dependency ingestion service container. So we have to do it inside our main project here. So click manage nugget packages, manage nugget packages and install swash boku swashboku.asp.net call. It installs all of them. You need this swagger gen, you need swagger UI, but all of them are contained inside of this swagger swashboku.asp.net call. Install it. Install it. Okay, click accept. Wait, I think it's installed already. Is it? Okay, we now have Swash Boku in our project now. Great. So now all you need to do is inside your startup.cs, we have to add here. You have to add it above your controller services. Add Swagger Gen. Okay, and that would be C. C dot Swagger doc. Start open API info. Okay, so title will be the title of our uh, that will be um our uh, YouTube developer API button uh -huh. and then version. Action can be let's say v1 and then description we want to add description let's say this is the swagger documentation action portal for our youtube dev api okay so we're done with that <clears throat> so we come here also we come to we come here say app dot use use swagger app dot use swagger and then we do app dot use swagger ui app dot use swagger ui swagger slash v1 slash Swagger.json Swagger.json mm, and then we can put Swagger. And then click here. Excuse me. Swagger UI. I don't know what is wrong with my visual studio today. It's not 
I would have typed and it will not, it will not come in here. So C dot, then we'll, this way we define our swagger endpoint. Okay. Um, call it um, YouTube then API. Okay. And then see that say we wanna we really don't need a route pretty so empty we can make it swagger or anything. So we're done integrating swagger. Let's um let's try to test it now and see. So what did I do? We installed the swashbuckle.sp.net um, nugget package. If you go to dependencies here, packages, you should see swashbuckle.sp.net core. Then we added swagger into our dependency injection service container. So this uh, we configure the middleware. So swagger gen, swagger doc, and then and then we also did now come here, use swagger and do swagger UI. So let's try to run our code now and see, see if it works. Okay, so just come here and just by just putting index.html, we show. Can you see? Voila! <laughs> YouTube developer API portal. This is our swagger endpoint. If you open this in a new tab, you get the JSON definition for this is our API service. Can you see? So, this is what you need to give a uh, front end guy or just for documentation of your API. So this API, we want developers to get all the developers. Let's try it out and see. Let's execute it inside here. Can you see? These are all our API, all our developers. So it's, it's really cool. Makes it look awesome, like your documentation is just perfect. So the next thing we should do now, we also want to add cost policy to our project so let me come to the code and stop execution so to add cost policy um this is what we do it's also very simple we add it in the dependence display so come here i just say services dot services dot add cost services dot add cost then i'll say options Excuse me, options. So the reason why we need to add calls, I think I've explained, so that when people are trying to call your API uh, from other applications, browsers, you will not be having consider policy issues. So that's right. So options dot add policy, you can add policy, and um, we can call the name. Let's say. YouTube, YouTube developer API policy, you say cost policy. Okay, so this is the name. And then we're also going to have a, a builder, an options builder. Okay, so I will have builder dot. Now builder, can, I'm going to demonstrate two instances, let's say, allow any origin dot allow any header it allows any header it allows z authorization authentication header z uh, accept header anything allow any method 
this is the first one and what this means is that let me put semicolons here okay and what this does is that is open is open no any particular um you are not you are not specifying any particular origin that is where your request should come from is open for any origin from any website from any device anything so this is number one this is the one you don't want to use in, in a production environment like when you are when you are shipping a real code so you don't want to use this now the second one um let me comment this out because we are going we are not going to use this we are going to use best practices <laughs> in this tutorial so so the second one is when you want to specify particular um origins so cause hard cause the same procedure options options dot add policy and then let me just copy the name youtube excuse me youtube to developer policy and then we have a builder then we have a builder okay so now we should make our builder now our builder will be instead of allow any we are going to have builder dot with origins can you see with origins with origins now it's from here you can define your origins let's say https um my website my my front end website dot com okay let's say you have uh, http 227.22222.167.34 so or or https example dot com so this is it and then you can also you can also specify the particular headers if you want to be selective what type of header can be passed to your api so after we have added course here we have added the service here then we will now come down here to now register it here for it to be used by our app so you you write it below the use routing app dot use writing so you say app dot use course dot use course and then what's the name of our course policy that we defined up here youtube youtube developer api policy so you do this if you were using any origin or if you are using specific origins you have to do this you have to do this below the use routing and just above the authorization how do i know this come and see microsoft documentation say it states read this set the policy name to blah 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 okay call the use course extension method and specify it okay the call to use course must be placed after use routing but before use authorization so uh, you know how middleware is working xp.net call so they are in process this one will be called first and then this and then that so now we have course policy on our half and here now only requests from this website will be allowed let's say you have a react app a react app that is calling endpoints from this your backend project so you just put um let's say http your web address or whatever local host 3000 i think react is served on 3000 for 3000 so so that's that for this tutorial the next thing we want to do is to um put our code on github yes i said i want to put our code on github so let's build our code and let's run and ensure things are still working fine Okay, let's index HTML. Does the swagger still load? Great, we're in good shape. So you can call any of these endpoints from the specified origins in this um, course policy. So um, I think that's all for this tutorial. Okay, we're going to add, uh, we want to add 
we want to add um we want to push our code, our code to github so let me open github here and try to let me try to open open my folder my project folder this rest api youtube great so just right inside here let's get in it uh, an empty it repo get in it okay great so let's add all our changes it add all changes okay let's commit the changes first build um okay well the present commit is added um swagger of dock and cost policy okay so let's create a new repo here click the plus new repository rest api asp.net call let's call rest api so developer api ASP.NET Core C sharp and ASP.NET Core API on YouTube. <laughs> YouTube using with Swagger. Swagger. I have problems with naming, naming projects. Really crazy. So let's copy your your git repo URL now. Great. So let's do a git remote add origin. Then paste the link here. Okay, already the origin. Okay, now we can git push origin master. Whoa, yes, our code is live on GitHub. Let's refresh the page and see. Great, now we have a company. <laughs> now we're building a company. So, okay, um, that's it for this tutorial. If you like it, please like, comment, subscribe, anything. If you have questions or queries, please comment below. And I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. So which, let me give you a spoiler. I'm um, thinking of starting a series where we'll build a real API business, a company uh -huh, with the speed on that call. So thanks, peace.